your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Mm, oh, this is so nice, darling. Mm-hmm, very nice. Hey, Shakespeare, stop digging your claws in my leg. I don't think that cat likes having his ears scratched. All cats like having their ears scratched. Oh, I like having my back scratched. I cannot take a hint. Mm, you weren't meant to. Oh, this is so nice. You and me and the fire. Oh, so nice tonight, David. Nice to be New Year's Eve time tomorrow. Listen, maybe we can make tomorrow night just as nice as this, shall we? Mm -hmm. Why people have to go out to celebrate, I will never know. It, it, It just doesn't seem to me that New Year's Eve is a reason to celebrate. Does it to you? No, I never could see it. David, you're not just saying that, are you? No, I'm not just saying that. Some of those matches, would you? Mm, if I can reach them. It's very strange how matches are always next to me, Cat. You know, Mama's afraid we're staying home because of her. No, Mama's crazy. That's exactly what I told her. Mama, I said, you're crazy. She didn't seem to mind. Oh, anyway, what's better than an evening like this? The perfect way to see New Year's come in. I wouldn't move for a million dollars. All right, Shakespeare, scat, 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 scat. You don't have to sit on my lap if you don't want to. Nobody's forcing you. You're such a foolish cat. All cats are foolish. All women are foolish, too. You mean including me in or including me out? No, you're not much of a woman, but you're very foolish. Oh, tell me why. Because you don't celebrate New Year's Eve. I celebrate 364 other days a year. That seems plenty to me. Nobody should mind if I don't celebrate New Year's Eve. Of course, you know, if you'd like to go out tomorrow night, I'd be very happy to escort you. Well, you may escort me to bed. No, come on. Mm, not New Year's Eve. You can escort yourself to bed. <gasps> Always postponing. Mm-mm. No, now, see see what you've done? You've gone and made the doorbell to ring. Who do you suppose it could be? Maybe it's somebody looking for River Road. Or... Always amazes me how people never know where they are. Oh, guess I better answer that ring. You better get a more hospitable <laughs> look on your face. That smile of yours wouldn't welcome the first robin in spring. If this is the first robin in spring. Nobody will be more surprised than him. Mr. Tucker, you're a fine robin. Uh, what kind of robin you accusing me of, ma'am? A spring robin. No, nope, I ain't been robbing no spring. I've <laughs> just been robbing my chicken coop. I brung you some fresh laid eggs. How uh, nice. You didn't have to. I though. wouldn't have if I had to. Here, take them before I scramble them. Oh, I will. <laughs> thanks. Thanks a lot, Mr. Tucker. Well, come on in. Come huh. on. David's in the living room. Come in. Uh, Sure got a bright look in your eyes tonight, Mrs. Norton. Have I now? Yep. Good Comes the setting of the sun, and the young wife's eyes light up brighter than the skies. Guess it's a reflection of Venus. <laughs> Don't turn such a bad phrase myself, do I? You speak veritable poetry, Mr. Tucker. Yep. Uh, when I was a lad of 48, I uh, dang near drove all the females in East Brook Mooney with the rhymes I spilled at him. Yep, there weren't no gayer cavalier than Jared Tucker. Oh, hello there, son. Well, hello, Mr. Tucker. What brings you over at this time of day? I, uh, I ain't disturbing nothing, am now, I? Now, what on earth would you be disturbing? Oh, I don't know. Delilah kind of egged me to stay home. She'd give me some line of talk that it ain't fitting to visit other folks at nine in the evening. Well, your sister's a very fine woman, Mr. Tucker, but you can visit us at nine in the evening any time you want. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's what I told her. I told her I was the kind of man that's always welcome in other folks' houses. You're right. I told her the only folks that wasn't welcome is them who expected there wouldn't be. <laughs> that, uh, that's philosophy. Oh, so that's what that is. Now, borry one of your chairs while you young folks tell me how you aim to bring in the new year. We are not aiming to do a thing about it. We're aiming to let her bring herself in. Yeah. Mean to tell me you ain't going to go carousing? We mean to tell you exactly well, that. you young folks sure got more brains than I give you credit for. It's going up in the world, David. I never could understand the kind of gallivanting that goes on New Year's Eve. All the city folks think it's a night for gay shenanigans. Such foolishness, foolishness. I, I, I ain't got no truck with it. No, oh, I guess most people feel considerably lucky to, to have survived another year. Oh, it ain't no luck, young fella. I, no, I've survived 86. 
If most folks had an inkling of what was going to be dealt out to them in the coming year, they wouldn't be kicking their feet around so foolish-like. That's my theory exactly. Say, how come you young folks got so much wits about you? Oh, we follow your example, Mr. Tucker. Well, could do worse, could. Yes, could. Yeah, sure is sad the time's, time goes spinning off and there ain't no way of catching back what's gone. I remember New Year's Eve when I was mooning calf. <laughs> <laughs> More dang fun than the barrel of monkeys. Oh, how bad. <laughs> a good, clean fun, mind you. Yeah. Oh, of course, I might have stole a kiss from a young filly. But... <laughs> oh, go on, Mr. Tucker, you're kidding me. It wasn't bad. Them was good days. <laughs> they sound wonderful. Oh, it wasn't bad if you was a handsome young man like Jared Tucker was. <laughs> was. Dare say even you would have had yourself a time, Mr. Norton. Well, thank you, Mr. Tucker. Of course, I I know you're starting to make me feel very sad that I wasn't born 50 years ago. I know that. 50? 50 mm-hmm. years ago? Heck, son, you should have been born 70 years ago. 70 years ago? My gosh, what a lot of New Year's Eves you've seen, Mr. Tucker. Yes, I've seen gay ones and I've seen sad ones. Uh, now, a uh, man's got to expect a few... Lonesome one. Now, there's no reason why you should be lonesome, Mr. Tucker. Who? Who said anything about my being lonesome? Oh, I didn't. Uh... You think I was complaining, young fellow? No. You ain't got no idea who you're dealing with. You'd be the last man on the earth who can play, Mr. Tucker. We know. Say, um, say, why don't you spend New Year's Eve with us, Mr. Tucker? Well, uh, you, uh, you folks going to be alone? We're planning to be just us, David, Mom, and I. Uh, just you. Mm. Well, sure don't want you to feel lonely. Sitting around this big house all be yourselves. Well, that that's sweet of you. Because there ain't nothing lonelier than watching that old man with his scythe creeping out the door when you're all be yourself. That's exactly how we felt, isn't it, David? So if it's going to kind of alleviate your lonesomeness, Jared Tucker will be the first one to offer himself up to sacrifice. Well, that's very neighborly of you, Mr. Tucker. Oh, a neighborly neighbor, that's me. Tell you what. What? I'll, uh... Bring over a little crock of something I brewed and hid away in the cellar. <laughs> we'll uh, see that new year in right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tucker, what about Delilah? Oh, her, that sister of mine. She, she's gone to visit some folks who live up past the other side of Cream Hill. I, I don't care for them. I don't cotton to them at all. So. Oh, and that's settled. Five of us will have a perfect evening. The new year's meant to be brought in by good friends together. Goodness, we're popular tonight. I'll get it. That's probably Delilah telling me each time I brung myself home. Women sure do hate to see men having themselves at times. Isn't it the truth? Hello. David, glad you're home. Oh, Roger, anything the matter? Of course, nothing the matter. Does something always be the matter when I call you? No, of course not. I'd just like to find out that nothing is. Who is it? It's Roger. Oh, give me my love. Claudia sends her love, Roger. Good. Send her mine. He sends his. Uh, let me come to the point, David. What are you doing tomorrow night? As a matter of fact, we've just been planning our evening, Roger. Doing big things? No, it may not sound very big to you, but they're big enough for us. For instance? We're going to spend the evening right here. What? That's right, you heard me. We've planned to spend the evening right here at home. But you can't. Why not? Because it's New Year's Eve. So what? Well, it just isn't done. By whom? By anybody. Well, we don't care about anybody. We're going to spend the evening right here. Well, all I can say is I don't approve. I don't approve at all. Why? What are you going to do? Celebrate, of course. What do you think? What do you mean by celebrating? The usual thing. Run myself ragged. Wake up feeling dreadful the next morning, hating (laughs) myself. Wondering how I could have been such a fool. But how can I celebrate if you're intent upon burying yourself up on the farm? Now, we don't consider ourselves buried, for one thing. I don't other... consider you buried either, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, man, that I loathe celebrating alone. Well, then, come on up and spend the evening with us. I will not. I spent Thanksgiving with you. That's plenty poaching. Oh, it makes no now, difference. Now, either you come down to New York and celebrate with me, or I'll have to be sensible and go to bed and not celebrate at all. And I'll never forgive you. What is going on, David? Shh, city folks sure do like to talk on them instruments. Well, David, Wait a minute, Roger. I... He wants it. I'll tell you later. No, I'm, um, I'm afraid it's impossible, Roger. I shall not take no for an answer. Why is it impossible? Well, in the first place, we don't want to, and in the second place, we have company coming in. Who? Oh. Mm, company. You're impossible. 
Your, your brother and sister-in-law. Oh, we'll bring them along. My brother and sister-in-law are in Boston, thank heavens. Then who? You're as bad as Claudia, Roger. I'll be as persistent as Claudia. Who? All right, I'll tell you. Jared Tucker. You using my name in vain, son? Hope not, Mr. Tucker. Well, bring him along, for heaven's sakes. All the better. What did you say, Roger? I said bring him along, by all means. That's what I thought you said. We'll show the old man what a New York New Year's Eve is. <laughs> say, that's an idea. We'll make it a night he'll never forget. <laughs> Be wonderful for him. I'll take him to the best spots in town and midnight on Times Square. What do you say? He hasn't many New Year's left to celebrate, you know. I say you're a very swell guy, Roger, and just for that, we'll come. Good. It's going to be wonderful. And it's all settled. You and Claudia and Jared Tucker will be my guests in town tomorrow night to celebrate New Year's Eve. Right. What a wonderful idea. Goodbye, David. David, what's been going on? Well, Mr. Tucker, it looks as if you're going to be involved in some pretty gay celebrating in New York tomorrow night. Speak plain, Sean. Speak plain. You know my partner, Roger Killian. Well... He invited us all to be his guest tomorrow night. We, uh, we, uh, gonna go pranching them nightclubs and whistling in the new year? <laughs> yes, sir, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll be hard and swoggle. <laughs> have to, have to get out my Sunday shoes. David, how come? When I told, uh, Roger that Tucker was our guest, he invited him along. I, I couldn't refuse for the old man. Of course not. What are you two whispering about? <clears throat> oh, I, I was just telling David, uh... What fun we're going to have tomorrow night. Wait till I tell Delilah that I'm going gallivanting in New York City. <laughs> Her teeth is going to drop out like chicken feet. <laughs> well, so it's happened to us like everybody else. One minute we're going to have a quiet New Year's Eve at home. In the next, New York City, Times Square. Say, maybe Mom will come too. No, 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 I guess she won't. Oh, well. We'll have fun, won't we? Oh, you bet your boots we will, darling. Just wait and see. Yippee, hooray! Yippee, 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 hee! <laughs> yippee what, Mr. Tucker? Oh, uh, just traction, ma'am. Loosen up my windpipe. <laughs> just wait till I show that big city what shenanigans can be. I'll make the 44 hurricane look like it was blowed, blowed, blowed clean from a corn cob. New York City? You better duck. Here comes Jared Tucker himself. Look at the best-selling books, and you'll see many titles that tell how to relax. Here's a suggestion in the same vein. Pause during the day's work for ice-cold Coca-Cola. That pause is always refreshing, and you work better with head or with hand when you work refreshed. Well, Joe, it looks like New York for New Year's for us. Mm, sure does, David, but uh, I have a feeling you won't be sorry. Really? I guess not. Just watching old, old Jared Tucker himself uh, running around and enjoying the entertainment is enough. Well, funny about New Year's Eve's, though, David. I, I can't remember when I was allowed to stay home and enjoy myself. Will you be in town? Yes, I'll see you around. Good. See you then, Joe. Goodbye, David. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudio was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>